Hey, what's up? David Cohn here for Learn Now Effects, and welcome back to another exciting fusion tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to make this trap code style particle globe inside of the winch resolve. So let's take a look. To start off, I'm going to make my project full HD. And I'm going to grab a new fusion comp. Seven seconds should be fine. And we'll jump over into Fusion. Now I'm going to grab my project file. Here's our only project file. It's a map. And this is the only thing we're going to be using, external element for this tutorial. Send it to the viewer. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a background tool. And I'm going to look at the dimensions of this image. It's 2715, so I'm going to go to the image tab of the background here and check our resolution 2715 by 1256. And I'm going to pipe this image into the mask input of the background and I'm going to change the background color to white. That's it. And I'm going to right click here and uncheck high quality, uncheck motion blur, turn on proxy. That'll make everything work a lot quicker. So I'm going to grab now a filter node. And we're about to start working with the particle systems. So what I'm going to do from now is I'm going to add a P image emitter. And I'm going to take the X density and expression, link it to the Y density. And I'm going to bring it to 0.3. And I'm going to pipe this background into the particle image emitter. Search for a P render, you can grab it from the toolbar. Pipe it in here. And let's look at it in the viewer. Looks pretty nice. If you zoom in, you'll see that this is entirely made out of particles. So I'm going to take this particle render and set it to 2D. All right, so you can see that these particles are pretty evenly distributed. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this particle emitter and particle image emitter and the particle render. And I'm going to paste it. I'm going to send the filter node to the viewer and the filter I am going to set to Sobel and I'm going to pipe the filter node into the particle image emitter and this time I'm going to bring the density to 0.5 and I'm going to look at the render in the viewer. All right, so here is our trace of particle, the outline made out of particles. So I'm going to merge these two together. This one used to be the foreground. Right now is the background, so I'm going to click Control T or on Mac Command T, and look at the merge node in the viewer. And this is our image. Looks pretty nice, but this is a pretty slow setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to change the dimensions of the P render. I'm going to go to the image, uncheck auto resolution, 2715. While you're doing this, you want to make sure nothing's in the viewer by 1256. And I'm going to do the same with the second render 3D. Go to the image tab uncheck auto resolution, one, 2,715 by 1,256. And these are the dimensions that we are looking for, and I'll explain why. So this is our image. It looks perfect. But this render, we don't want to have to wait for this to render every time. So I'm going to pre-compose this. I'm going to pre-render it. So I'm going to right-click, click Save Image, and I'm going to call this particle Map. And you have to type the file extension, so I'm going to type that PNG because I want an alpha channel. So I'm going to click Save. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm not going to just get rid of it just now. I'm going to get rid of it from the viewer. And I'm going to group this, put it in the side because we're going to need this later. I'll show you why we're going to need this later. And I'm going to take this image, the particle map, and I'm going to drag it into the viewer. Here's our particle map. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a scale node. It's going to be like a half resolution. So I'm going to set the scale to 0.5. And it'll be a lot quicker to view it this way. Yeah, so it loses a little bit of detail. So all you're going to do at the end is you're going to get rid of the scale node and you're going to get all your detail back. So I'm going to grab a shape 3D node, set it to sphere. 
bring up the base subdivisions and the height subdivisions and I'm going to pipe this in and I'm going to send this to 3D viewport and here is our particle world and the reason I wanted to save the dimensions of the image because it's perfectly mapped towards a sphere it's the perfect dimensions for a sphere so if I get rid of the scale you'll see that there's going to be some more detail yeah there it is so I'm going to put this back to preview quicker because it just caches this scale and it's going to be a lot quicker to work with so in the shape 3D what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the transform on the Y rotation I'm going to add an expression and I'm simply going to type time so as you can see it's going to start spinning so what I'm going to add now is a directional light and I'm going to merge this with the shape and we're going to be sharing this light among a few render passes so I'm going to put it somewhere where we can share it somewhere like here and it doesn't matter the position of the light when it comes to the directional light other lights it matters the position except the ambient light but the directional light it doesn't matter it just matters that what matters is the rotation so I'm going to rotate the lamp a little bit let me get in there so I can see it closer All right, so I'm going to make it shine down at an angle like that. And I'm going to search for a render 3D right away. Yeah, so it's too big at the moment, but I'm going to turn on the lighting. And the back end of the sphere is going to become dark, so we won't have focus on the back end of the sphere, as you can see. And I know it looks like you have like an outline right now, but if I turn off the checkered underlay, you can see that you can only see the front part of the map. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a camera from the toolbar. And I'm going to add this to the Merge 3D. Send the Merge 3D to the viewer. And here's our camera. I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to bring it back. Switch to Dual Viewer. The Render 3D will be in Viewer 1 and the 3D scene in Viewer 2. I'm going to turn off the checkered underlay in Viewer 1. And I'm going to move the camera. All right, so this is a pretty good perspective. I can move it back a little bit more. That's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to frame 130, maybe 120 actually, and I'm going to go to the camera, select it, go to the transform, and on the Z, I'm going to animate this. You can probably just click on the diamond button. And at frame zero, I'm going to move the camera in to the center of the earth of the sphere so that's pretty good now we're going to play with the splines later to smooth out this animation add some ease in, in the keyframes but that's basically it we're going to share this light in this camera to the next pass so in the next pass what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to this group here and i'm going to get rid of this media in from the background and now what we see in the pm meter what i'm going to do i'm going to get rid of this filter too because we only need one pass and in the P emitter, I'm going to set this to 0.1. And this should render pretty quickly. So we have this grid of dots. And this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that we still have the, the alpha channel. I'm going to right click and I'm going to save image. And I'm going to call this particle grid dot PNG. Always have to write the file extensions, otherwise it'll save as a fuse pick and we don't want that. That's pretty good. And I'm gonna grab this file from the from here. And I can add another scale node just to make things work quicker. And I'm going to bring this on top because this is going to be on top after all. And I'm going to pipe this into here, copy the shape. Paste it, pipe it in there, and I'm going to share the same light. I'm going to move the Merge 3D up, and I'm going to share this, this camera, and I'm going to copy it, copy the render, paste, and the render, the final render where it's already a sphere, you can just use it your dimensions of the project, full HD, whatever, standard dimension, doesn't have to be mapped towards a sphere. 
So I'm going to go here to the frame where you can actually see the whole sphere. And I'm going to turn on the checkered underlay. Turn off the che checkered underlay. So we can see, hardly see it. So what I'm going to add to this right now is called is a filter node. And in this filter node, I'm going to set this to defocus. And I'm going to bring the power up. Let's look at it in the viewer. Yeah, so you can hardly see it, so I'm going to add a brightness contrast node. I'll bring the gain up. Even more. Something like this. This gain is a little bit too high, but I'm going to bring the defocus power even higher. It's going to get really blurry like this. And this is basically it. And I'm going to go to the 3D shape and I'm going to bring the radius up a little bit. Just, you know, we can leave the radius as it is and we'll play with the size with the merge tool. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shape 3D, another one. I'll bring this on top, right here. Set it to sphere. Bring up the base subdivisions, bring up the height subdivisions, like that. And I'm going to take a background node, and I'm going to need the background that has the dimensions of the sphere. So I'm just going to copy it, and I'll paste it here. And to this background, I'm going to add a polygon mask. And I'm going to draw two points. I'm going to go to the corner here, draw a point. To this corner, draw a point. And I'm going to look at our background. I'm going to bring up the border width. It doesn't matter that if it's that straight, but if you want it to be straight, what you would do, you would take these two points. Take these two points, you would take this insert. You would select these two points, and you would shift P, and that would publish them. And since they're both published, you can make sure that they're the same in the Y position. So this one's 0.97, this one's 0.98. So I can make this 0.97 and this one 0.97. So now they're aligned perfectly. So you publish the points. And I'm going to make the border width a little bit higher. And let's look at our background. All right, so here it is. And this is way too thick, so I'm going to bring the thickness down as as thin as possible actually you have to make it really thin like that and i'm going to add a duplicate node and let's look at our duplicate node i'm going to bring copies to 20 and i'm going to take the center widget and i'm going to move it down a little bit till get to the bottom of the screen might have moved it a little bit too far down there it is and I'm going to pipe this into the shape 3D. And now we're going to see if it's thick enough or not. So this looks pretty good. We can make it just a little bit thicker. Polygon mask, just a little bit. Make it 0 0.0002. That's better. And I'm going to add this directional light. We're going to be sharing it and the camera. And I'm going to add another filter, filter, and I'm going to set it to defocus. And yeah, I'm supposed to copy this render 3D. Paste it here. And now I'm going to pipe it into the filter. Set the filter to defocus. Bring up the power. And let's see what we got going on here. Now we can hardly see it. It's not not even there technically, but it looks it just adds a little bit of detail that that helps. So these are basically our passes. So when it comes to this this earth, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to add I'm going to add our fused intensity. You can get this for free in the link in the description. And I'm going to bring the color to blue. And I'm going to bring the mode to power. And I'm going to bring the vibrance up. That gives it a little bit of light, like a glow sort of thing. And I can bring up the gain also. Here where we have the gain. We bring it up a little bit. Looks pretty good. And now over this, I'm going to merge our grid. And I'm going to use the merge and I'm going to bring up the size. Because the grid's a little bit too big. 
So here it is. Here's our grid. It's like sort of a, it's like an atmosphere. Looks pretty good. And this, I'm going to merge this also here. This looks pretty good, and I'm going to bring the size up also a little bit because I don't want it to be right around the Earth. Something like that. And that looks pretty good. And the Earth rotates, and we have the camera movement. So I'm just, I'm not done yet. I'm going to add a little bit more tweaking to this. So I'm going to copy the shape 3D, paste it here, and I'm going to grab a regular particle emitter and a regular particle render, and I'm going to go to the particle emitter, go to the region, set it to mesh, pipe this 3D shape into the particle emitter, pipe the particle emitter into the particle render. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to style, set it to blob. We need the size control so i'm going to bring the size down like a lot i would have done point but point doesn't have any size controls and i'm going to bring up the size variance ever so slightly and size over life we can have them fade a little bit you can play with this curve smooth it out there it is and i'm going to go here bring up the number variance and a bit more bring down the lifespan like really really low and bring up the number to 100 position variance up very little and now we can look at our particle render. So it doesn't do much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the particle emitter, change the rotation to rotation relative to motion. And I'm going to uncheck always face camera. And now the particles are going to disappear because there's no motion yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for P turbulence. And I'm going to take Get it out of there first and i'm going to get rid of this from the viewer i'm going to take this x strength and i'm going to add an expression y strength add an expression and i'm going to link all of this to z and i'm going to bring the z up somewhere here 0.5 probably density i'm going to bring to 30 and now i'm going to pipe this back in here and I'm going to set this particle render as it is. So I'm just going to look at it. Leave this as it is. And if I play this, we see that these are moving pretty, pretty interestingly. So I'm going to add the light and the camera because they all need to react to the same lights and cameras. And I can move this, shift it a little bit so it matches up with everything else because the render 3D, the shape, the just keep everything straight and I'm going to take a copy of this render 3D once more, paste it here. And this is our particles. These are our particles. The size looks pretty nice. Right off the bat, we got a pretty good size. So I can bring it up a little bit, just, just a little bit. You can't, you don't want them too big. So you hold down control or command on your keyboard while moving the slider that give you some accuracy over the slider. It doesn't just use in big iterations. So this looks pretty good. And after this, I'm going to add another TNT, it's intensity. And I'm going to bring the color to blue. I'm going to bring the mode to vibrant and I'm going to bring the vibrance up. So this looks pretty good. We can try the different modes. You can try basic, like vibrant is a little bit different. So I think power, yeah, dynamic is too much. Power is the best. And I'll bring up the gain a little bit to give it a little bit of glow. Yeah, there we are. And I'm going to merge this over the final result. And I think I can bring the size up a little bit. Yeah, so when you render this, you can hardly see them. As you can see, they, were, they look like this in the original render too, but you could hardly see them once they rendered. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the spline editor and I'm going to go to the camera. Because that's basically the only thing we animated and I'm going to fit the points, select both of these keyframes, shift S and that gives you an ease in and ease out. And I'm going to close the spline editor, connect this to the media out. And you're done. That's how you make a particle globe inside of DaVinci Resolve. I hope you guys liked this video. Until next time, I'm David Cohen, this is LearnNowFX, and I'll see you next week.